let it fall fresh. Let it fall fresh on us. It's coming down. It's pouring out. The time is now. We need the rain. Everybody say, we need the rain. We need the rain, oh God. We need the rain. We need the rain.
Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within His presence. So I speak Jesus. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus uh. Till every dark addiction starts to break oh, God. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom So I speak Jesus Cause your name, your name is power Your name
name of Jesus. Oh God. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. Somebody needs to know it. So I speak Jesus. moments can we lift up the only name that's worthy to be praised hallelujah come on lift up the name of Jesus Jesus we magnify you here this evening Jesus come on just for a few more moments if we could all over this building all over the sanctuary let's just raise our hands and begin to exalt the name of Jesus in this place the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord some some people are just waiting waiting trying to see what's going to happen next they're, they're trying to see what Jesus is going to do next but Jesus is waiting trying to see what what are you going to do next now that I'm here now that you worship me now that you've praised me and I've filled this room I'm in this sanctuary whatever needs you have I'm here I'm here right now to heal I'm here right now to deliver. I'm here right now. That's what he is here to do right now. Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. One more time, give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you make your way back to your seats this evening. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's more than just a name. Look at somebody. As you go back to your seat, as you have a seat, tell them, it's more than just a name. It's more than just a name. I'm not getting excited because it's fun to say the name of Jesus. I don't get excited because I can't think of another name to say. But in the name of Jesus, we find everything that we need. Everything that we need. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. I'm not calling on some political person or some CEO, some celebrity. I'm, I'm calling on the creator of heaven and earth. The one that knows me better than I know myself. There's so much power in the name of Jesus. Amen. When you're getting ready to have an accident or something happens that's out of control, you don't think of any other name but Jesus. You call on the name of Jesus because he's the only one that can answer, that can move in a moment's time, in, in a split second, he can deliver. He can balance what's out of balance. He can take a vehicle that's flying 
out of control in some way bring it back into control. I know somebody can testify to the fact that I called on the name of Jesus. And if it had been just a name, nothing would have happened. But I can testify to the fact that when I called on the name of Jesus, I didn't just say some second person in the Trinity. I called on the one who had all power in heaven and earth. And whatever he had to do, he did it to intervene for me because there's power, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Anybody love worship in that name? Anybody love glorifying that name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to continue to worship as we always do every service. We're going to participate in our tithe and offering this morning or this evening. Uh, we do have several ways to give. They are on the screen behind me. Our brother in here, if you are giving by way of cash or by way of check, if you would just raise your hand, they'll be happy to get you an envelope so that you can prepare your tithe and offering this evening. Everybody say this Tuesday. April the 5th at 7 p.m. we are having a shine bag assembly. We're asking everyone that can come and be a part and help and prepare for shine this coming weekend. If you could spare at least about 30 minutes, uh, the more people we have, the quicker we can get it done this Tuesday, this Wednesday night. Everybody say Wednesday night, April the 6th at 6.30 p.m. We're asking as many people who can. Again, we're here also Wednesday nights for uh, Bible study, but we're asking you to get here a little bit earlier. If you're here for the 7.30, maybe you can get here around 6.30 and help out with the Shine work night. Uh, we're preparing the church for Shine this coming weekend. Any ladies excited about Shine this weekend? <laughs> Amen. This is a, a wonderful conference that blesses so many women that come from so far, and we want to make sure our house is ready. Amen. Anybody ever have guests over a, a dirty house? No, sir. If you were raised right, you know before your guests come, if your house, it may already be clean, but there's some little corners you might need to sweep out and scuff marks you need to get off. That's what we're going to be doing this Wednesday. We're asking you to please come and be a part. We will have an abbreviated service this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m., and after the service, we'll continue to do whatever needs uh, to be completed. Uh, this Saturday, all the men in the house. Don't get quiet on me now. Men in the house. Where are all the men at? All right, thank you. We got some up here. We got a few out there. Amen. This Saturday, after shine, after our wives and daughters and sisters have been blessed, we have a responsibility to get the house of God back in order to set up the stairs, uh, the chairs again. This coming Saturday, asking everyone to be here at the church around noon to do so. So I'm, I'm I know we're going to see a lot of men. Nobody's going to be out fishing or all men, young men, old men, men, men. Amen. Amen. I believe Sister Savannah's coming at this time. She has an announcement. Bless the Lord. I don't know. My hair's falling, and I was going to fix it, but I was scared I didn't have time. So bless the Lord. Um, to be honest, I don't know what I'm announcing. We have new merch. Um, okay, so I think it's really cool to have church merch that says cool stuff on it because when you go out, people are like, oh, where'd you get that? And you'll be like, oh, my church, you should come sometime. And so it's a great outreach tool. They're super cute. And these that we have, we only have like 70 and it's like limited edition. So like if you get it, then you're like in this special club. And I'm in it, so like I don't know how cool it is, but it's, I think it's really cool to be in this club that has these light blue found to help hoodies. And if you haven't downloaded that song, go download that song and support your church. And buy a hoodie and support your church. And keep your wallets warm because we have It Is Done merch coming. Next. <laughs> and It Is Done, I think, is coming out this Friday. Woo! This is the title. It's the one we do where we're like, it is done. It is in the name of Jesus. That one, that's our, in the name of Jesus. That one, uh, we recorded it, if you didn't know, we recorded it at Zion, and it will also be released this Friday. And we have cool merch coming out with it. So you should get it, you should pre-order the song when we say pre-order the song. And that's it, I love you guys. I love y'all, so sweet. Okay, that's it. 
All right, let's all stand this evening as we prepare to bring our tithe and offering unto the Lord. Remember to get your, I have found a help, or found a help, I'm sorry, found a help. I, I'm not the best when it comes to lyrics. I just kind of make up the words as we go. Uh, we're going to pray this evening. If you don't mind raising your tithe and offering, if you're raising your hand, if you will be giving in other ways. We're going to pray and ask the Lord to bless what we've brought to him this evening. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing that you have given to us, the increase that you've provided for us. We're asking you, Lord, to bless what we are giving you tonight, God, both our tithe and our offering, that you would multiply it and use it for the furtherance of the kingdom and the gospel. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everyone said amen. Let's bring our tithe and offering unto the Lord. A shepherd in the valley, and I shall not want. I shall not want. I shall not want. Cause my cup's running over, running over, and I shall not want. And I will lift my eyes to where my help comes from. And I won't be afraid of the shadow, cause I've seen the sun. And no, I will not stop when the way gets hot. Cause the dream only grows in the valley, and that's when you are. I shall not want, I shall not want. Oh, my soul's got a shepherd.
not a shepherd in the valley and I shall not oh. Said I shall not oh. I shall not oh. Because my cup's running over, running over and I shall not oh. to your seats this evening. Hallelujah. How many of you are thankful to be in the house of the Lord this evening? Amen. Amen. We feel the presence of God already, and God is just being glorified in this place. Amen. Praise God. We're so glad that each and every one of you are here with us at the Pentecostals of Katy. And if this is your first time or your second time with us and you stepped in, but you did not fill out a guest card, would you please just raise your hands? We have ushers here that are going by. We want to make sure that you fill one of these cards out because there are gifts that are going to be given to you when you fill this out. And we want to greet you whenever it's time to move into a time of greeting. So if you're, if you're it's your first time or your second time and you didn't fill a card out, just raise your hand. Amen. It looks like we got everybody in the house tonight. I mean, we do have a first-time guest with us. And... Um, her name is Marilosa, if I got that name right. Would you please just raise your hand wherever you're sitting? We just want to know where you're sitting at tonight. Back here in the back? All right. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And why don't you help me welcome our online audience, those who are watching us on Facebook and listening to us through Revival Radio and any other platform. We're so thankful that you tuned in to the Pentecostals of Katie, and we pray this service blesses you tonight. 
Amen. That is all we have for tonight. We're going to move into a time of greeting. And so whenever we put five minutes on the clock, uh, we just want you to get out of your seat, introduce yourself to somebody, greet, just greet somebody, somebody who you're not normally used to talking to or greeting. Why don't you go and shake their hand, give them a hug, and just tell them how great they look. Amen. Be appropriate. Amen. Tonight, we're going to put five minutes on the clock. Amen. Let us stand to our feet and let us greet each other in the name of the Lord. God bless you.
you're thankful for freedom. You're thank thankful for the forgiveness of sins. Thankful for being washed in the name of Jesus. Thankful for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thankful for deliverance. Amen. Would you give him praise right now? God's ever delivered you out of something. God's ever healed. God's ever performed a miracle for you. Would you give him praise right now? Hallelujah. You're worthy, Jesus. Amen. Brother Gage is getting ready to come and minister the word of the Lord. Right before he comes, I want to ask if you would help me out with something. This week is Shine. Shine starts Friday night. We are expecting a crowd of people here. It's one of the largest events that we host all year long. And we are expecting a tremendous move of the Lord in this place Friday and Saturday. Amen. And all the ladies, are you excited about Shine? Amen. Of course, you know, Pastor is dealing with some health issues right now, and we miss Pastor and Sister McKee. And I either spoke very prophetic or I was very pathetic this morning when I said that uh, he has no blood clots in his lungs. I misread a message, and that's not true, but they are dissolving. So everything is looking on the rightward trend. We are thankful for that. But in light of everything that's going on, in light of everything that's going on right now, I would like to ask if there are some individuals here on Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday, just four days, if you would take one of those days and be in a special prayer for Pastor and Sister McKee. Sister McKee's got a lot on her. No one that shines getting ready to take place this week. Pastor's got a lot on his mind. I know he's aggravated. His text to me was aggravating. You know how Pastor is. He likes to get up and go. And to have to do what he's doing right now, just laying there, has got to be the most aggravating part of this process. So how many of you would just be in prayer? One of those days, you would take a day, and you'll spend a little bit of time fasting, either all day or a meal. And, you know, if, it, if you don't eat breakfast, typically, don't call that a fast, you know. But if you typically eat breakfast and you want to, like, you know, skip out on breakfast and just fast, I think it would be good for all of us, our own spiritual walk with the Lord. Amen. To dig a little deeper, when things get a little chaos, a little chaotic, you always want to focus on what you can control, and then you want to dig a little deeper spiritually. So how many of you would be willing to dig a little deeper spiritually Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or th Thursday? Take one day. If you'd just raise your hand, I'm going to commit to taking at least one day and doing some fasting and praying for Pastor and Sister McKee, and I know that that will be a blessing. Amen. The Bible says that if my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves. It all starts with humility. If you think that you have all the answers, then you're never going to tap into God things. But when you humble yourself in the midst of, and I preached this a while back uh, from, from the book of James and then also the book of Peter, where both settings say that we are to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. James, there was fighting going on within the church. Peter, there was stuff that was going on outside the community that was attacking the church. Chronicles, which I just started quoting, was that the trouble was actually coming from the Lord himself. He says, if I send pestilence, if I send disease, if I cause things to happen that are causing calamity, in all three instances, if my people will humble themselves, the way that you humble yourself it's not by wearing the wrong color of socks or the wrong color of shoes to your outfit or you know, mixing up your shoes. That's not how you humble yourself. You humble yourself that when you're placed within a humiliating situation, you do things God's way. That's how you humble yourselves. You do things God's way. And so we are in a chaotic time of the United States and our world, and the list goes on and on. And we don't want to let the world's mindset and the world's way of dealing with things to, to be our mode of conduct. Instead, we are different. We are not going to be squeezed into how this world operates. We're going to do things the kingdom way. And the kingdom way is that we humble ourselves. That's the first part of it. If you are praying and you're not humbling yourself, then your prayers, it, it just doesn't work that way. Amen. It starts with 
humbling yourself, if you are resisting the devil, I'm going to fight against the devil, and you're going to fight against the devil, and you don't first submit to the Lord, he's not going to, he's not going to run away. So it all starts with humility. Amen. So humility means that we're going to go to the Lord with uh, understanding that we don't have all the answers. We don't have the power within ourselves, but we know the one who has all the answers, who is all powerful. So we submit ourselves to him. Amen. So thank you so very much. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, one of those days. And I know you're praying every day, but one of those days you're going to have special prayer for Pastor and Sister McKee and spend some time fasting. Thank you so very much. I know they will appreciate it. If my people will hum themselves, pray and seek my face. Amen. Amen. There's step-by-step process. I won't continue with all of that, but I, um, I just really felt led of the Lord to ask our church body to be in prayer and fasting for the next four days. So thank you so very much. Amen. Would you put your hands together? Welcome our student pastor. Pastor Gage is coming to preach the word of the Lord tonight. Come on now, clap your hands unto the Lord. Come on, somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, somebody shout the name of Jesus in this house. Come on, Jesus, we magnify you. We glorify you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do in this service. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Come on, are you really glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Thank you, Dr. Wilson, for the introduction. Don't we miss our pastor and our pastor's wife tonight? I believe that God is doing a work in his body. And when faith rises here in a few moments the preached word of God we are going to pray the prayer of faith and I believe that God is going to touch him in a special way tonight amen thank you Jesus I want to direct your attention to the word of the Lord tonight book of 2nd Kings chapter 5 begin reading at verse number 1 2nd Kings chapter 5 verse number 1 it says that now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Skipping down to verse number 9, says, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth. And he went away and said, Behold, I thought he surely will come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Naaman said, I don't like the process. I just want the miracle. Naaman said, I thought he'd at least come out here and talk to me himself. But he sent somebody, he sent a messenger to me to give me this process that I really don't like. He goes on to say, he says, Are not Abana and Farpar and the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean, he said. So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father... If the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldn't thou have done it? How much rather then, when he saith unto thee, Wash and be clean. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, 
according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean see Naaman had a problem he had a need he needed a miracle and he had to reach a place where he was willing to do whatever it took to receive a miracle from God I want to preach for the next few moments of ministry on whatever it takes there is no doubt in my mind that God is going to do miracles in this house if you need a miracle tonight in this house I want you to lift your hand right now God knows and God sees and now I want you to lift your voice right now and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus right now God you see every need every situation God I'm asking tonight that you move by the power and the authority God that's in your name God not for my glory God but for yours Jesus I'm asking you tonight to move in this house Anoint these lips of clay, God. Your word is anointed. God, I ask that you move tonight in this house. Lord, we bind and we come against every spirit of doubt right now and every fear that would try and come against what you want to do in this service. God, we ask tonight in this place that the gifts of the Spirit would be loosed in this house, that the gift of healing would be loosed in this house. God, unleash our faith, God, so that we can trust you tonight for a miracle. And everybody said in Jesus' name, Clap your hands one more time unto the Lord. And you may be seated. I grew up in a church in Magnolia, Texas that Brother Steve Worley pastored. Brother Steve Worley had a lot of things that he would say that have stuck with me into adulthood. I'll never forget when he preached a message on stopping yourself from sinning and he said, if you're stealing chickens, stop stealing chickens. And he would also say that in reference to doing what God asks you to do, that if you want a Betty Crocker cake, you need to follow the Betty Crocker recipe. That's deep, isn't it? I, I know some of you super spiritual ones, that was right over your head tonight. You're going to have to bring it down this morning or th this evening. You had Dr. Wilson this morning. I'm not a doctor. Not even close. But you see, the thing about Betty Crocker is this is a recipe that is tried and true. For almost 80 or 90 years, Betty Crocker cakes have been around. It's not a complicated recipe, but in order to get a Betty Crocker cake, you have to follow the Betty Crocker recipe. <laughs> Brother Oyer, if you were to come tonight and try and make a cake and you did not follow the Betty Crocker recipe, General Mills would tell you that it is not their responsibility that you ended up with a product that wasn't what they designated this one to be. Because if you change the recipe, this becomes a Nick Oyer cake, not a Betty Crocker cake. You see, in 2022, we need to go back to the importance of realizing that we need to follow instructions. We want it our way. We want to do it our way. We want to have it to where we want to have it. We just don't like being inconvenienced. This is the Burger King generation. We want it our way. And in 2022, we've got a lot of people that are trying to live for God their way. We've got a lot of people that want to be used their way. We've got a lot of people that want to be saved their way. We've got a lot of people that want to be healed their way. They want to go see Benny Hinn or whatever false prophets in town and receive their healing. We've got a lot of people that want to hear from God in their own way. They want to go to Joel Osteen's church or listen to Joyce Meyer or this one or that one. They don't want to have to pray and get in the presence of God. They just want to go somewhere and get a word. But you hear me tonight, there's always going to be an easier way to do things. But not every easy way is the right way. 
Many today want the blessings of God without pay and tithe and offering. Many today want elevation in ministry without sacrifice. Many people want healing without faithfulness to the house of God. Many people want it their way. Many people want to tread in the deep waters of God without consecration. Many people want to see God do great things, but they don't want to have to do anything to get it. But I believe that God is raising up a generation in 2022 that wants to see God do great and mighty things and they don't mind doing whatever it takes. They don't mind tarrying if that's what it takes to see a breakthrough. They don't mind praying and fasting if that's what it means to see a healing. We are the whatever it takes generation that will see the coming of the Lord. I know that it may feel uncomfortable sometimes to tarry in the presence of God. But I've come to tell you that when you tarry in the presence of God and you wait for God to move, guess what? God is always going to show up. I've never had a two-minute prayer and had a deep breakthrough. I have never in my life lived in a shallow place spiritually and seen God do great things. Can I tell you tonight that if you want to see God do something great in this place, you need to dig in and say, God, I'm not leaving here the same. I'm not leaving here without my healing. I'm not leaving here without my breakthrough. So we read in our scripture text tonight about a man named Naaman, a great man, a mighty man, and he needed a miracle. And I want to dissect this story tonight with you and explain to you three key things that I think that we need to understand if we want to see God do a miracle. Number one, you've got to listen to the voice of God. God forbid in 2022 that we lean on secular voices books and podcasts more than we do on the voice of God in a generation that loves to be in tune with what is trending listening to the voice of God is always trending hearing from God is always important in this generation that we are living in you see Naaman was an important man The word of the Lord came to Naaman and said, you need to go dip in the Jordan seven times. No doubt that Naaman's friends probably would have told him, Naaman, I don't think all of that is necessary. Naaman's own flesh said, isn't there somewhere else that I can go and take a dip and get on the good old gospel ship? Isn't there somewhere else that I can be healed? Isn't there another place that I can do this? No, Naaman, it's got to be God's way if you want to see a miracle. It's got to be God's way if you want to be made whole. You see, the only way that you are ever going to be healed, the only way that you're ever going to receive your miracle is if you listen to the voice of God when He speaks. If God says go to the altar, you better march yourself down to an altar. If God says sacrifice, you better learn how to sacrifice. If God says fast, you better fast. If God says you better lay aside your pride and go down there and lift your hands, you better be obedient to what the Lord says because in our own minds we have this thing that we think that we can do it another way in the book of Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 12 it says that there is a way which seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death you see there is another way that you think that you can get this healing this miracle this breakthrough but can I tell you the end thereof of your thoughts and your desires to do it another way are contrary to God's ways and God is not a man that he should lie He's not going to change it just for you. But I've come to tell you tonight that if God is calling you to something, you better submit to the authority and the rule of his voice and do what God said to do. Oh, well, I think I can be blessed. 
and be involved in immoral activity. I think that I can be blessed and be unequally yoked. I think that I can do this and be just fine. You better be careful when you get to thinking about doing it your way because the plan of God and the will of God will never be fulfilled in your life until you learn to be sensitive to His voice. When you're sensitive to His voice, He's going to tell you who you should date, who you should marry, where you should go, some places you shouldn't go, and some things you ought not mess with. But I know, and we, we sometimes get that Sinatra spirit. He did it his way, and he's extra crispy today. I know you think you've got a better plan. But there's no plan that trumps God's plan. In Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Can I tell you that if you want a miracle, you better get in tune with the voice of God. If you want a breakthrough, you better tune your ears to the voice of God. Some of you are here tonight and you're living in frustration because the way that God is doing it is not how you would have done it. The things that are coming to pass in your life, you don't understand. But can I tell you, on your road and on your journey to a miracle, there are going to be bumps, there are going to be bruises, there are going to be things that you don't understand. But at the end of the day, when God works the miracle, you're not going to look back and remember any of it. Number two, you've got to be willing to set aside your pride. I am so over. Pretty praise. We come to the house of the Lord. Out of habit and out of ritual. And we have slid into the ritual of coming here and not getting in contact with Jesus Christ. I'm sorry to disappoint you if you came for the show tonight. But I didn't come for you and I didn't come for anybody else but Jesus Christ. I didn't come to impress you. I didn't dress to impress. But I came for a move of the Spirit. I came to receive a miracle. Somebody clap your hands. I was reading an article the other day and it said that the average altar call in North America only lasts seven minutes. God forbid that we slip into the mode where we are okay coming here with our marriages in trouble, our minds under attack, our children under attack, and we go through the motions. I've come to tell somebody tonight you need to give pride the boot out of your relationship with God and understand that until pride goes, until pride is gone, there will never be a true breakthrough or a miracle. book of Proverbs chapter 16 verse number 18 said that pride goeth before destruction and the haughty spirit before a fall. Oh, but Brother Gage, what if they know that I don't have it all together? I'll give you a little revelation here tonight. None of us do. From up here to back there, every single one of us deals with our flesh. Every single one of us struggles. But can I tell you that how you keep your flesh under subjection is when you come to the house of God, you learn how to dance and you learn how to respond to the man of God. Not just during the singing, but when the preaching's going forth, you respond. But I'm noticing a trend in the apostolic movement. We come here in our three-piece suits and we sit down and we only respond when they sing something that we like. Certain people preach, we don't respond. We come here so polished, so prim and so proper. I thought you came to church and you're like, can you pass the great Poupon? You're so fancy. You look the same when you leave as you did when you got here. And it bothers me. 
Because all the while that you're abiding in your pride and sitting on that pew, the devil is working overtime on your mind. And can I tell you, if you can't win the victory on a Sunday night, you'll never win it on a Monday morning. Because pride goes before a fall. Pride goes before a destruction. I don't know about you, but I've never gotten so Pentecostal that I can't praise the Lord. I've never gotten so apostolic that I'm apostate. I have never gotten to the point where I can come into the house of God and play patty cake with Jesus. You see, Naaman had to lay aside his pride in order to receive his miracle. Naaman, no doubt, wanted it the easy way. But God had a different plan. God had a different way of going about it. Can I tell some of you today in this house, that the will of God will never be fulfilled, your, me- your, your calling, your anointing will never come to fruition until you learn to lay aside your pride. I, I'm so worried about what they think of me. That voice is from the enemy. I'm so worried about what they're going to say about me after church. That voice is from the enemy. I, I just don't know what they're going to think about me. That voice is from the enemy. I can tell you tonight that there is a God who stands on the banks of the heavenlies looking down saying, you know what? If you'll just respond, I'll do what I said I would do. If you'll just respond to my word, if you'll just be obedient, if you'll just respond, I will follow through. Oh, Naaman, but... Your fingers are falling off. Name and you've lost an ear. But name and what else do you have to lose? What do you have to lose tonight if you respond at the conclusion of this service? Either you're going to go home in the same condition you came here in or you're going to leave here with a miracle. One or two things is going to happen. And and given me the choice, I'll tell you this. Every single time I come to the house of God, I see it as an opportunity to receive the miracle that I've been praying about. Every time I walk through the doors, it's another opportunity for God to follow through with his word and do what he said that he would do. So Naaman got a hold of his pride. He thought that the Jordan was beneath him. Just how some of you think praise and worship is beneath you. Naaman thought that I'm going to try and do it another way. I'm going to at least ask because I don't like the options that I've been given. Serving God sometimes is a limited options kind of lifestyle. Because sometimes I come in here and I don't want to praise if I'm just being honest with you. Just because you have REV in front of your name doesn't mean that you show up at the house of God and you want to dance and shout and boogaloo for Jesus every service. I can tell you there's sometimes I come here and the enemy's been at war on my mind and on my flesh. And the last thing I want to do is lift my hands. The last thing I want to do is praise. But I can tell you that when I lift my hands, the enemy begins to flee and God begins to strengthen and God begins to touch because he's faithful to do that which he promised. So Naaman conquered his pride. Naaman said, you know what, I guess I'll do it. But can I tell you that a made-up mind is not enough when God has asked you to do something? Oh, I've made up my mind. Show me your faith. The third point I want to make tonight is put some works with your faith. James 2, 17 and 18 said, even so faith. 
if it hath not works, is dead. Dead. Deader than a doornail. Dead. Dead, 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 dead. I don't like dead faith. Dead faith comes to church and doesn't mind not shouting. Dead faith comes to church. They don't mind praying, but they don't want to engage. Dead faith comes to church, but they don't serve in ministry. Dead faith comes to church, and they don't do anything but take. Real faith comes to church and says, you know what? Let me get involved. What can I do for the kingdom? Can I pray for somebody? Can I get engaged in ministry? The book of James goes on to say, it says, Yea, a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. It's time for the apostolic movement in 2022 to put our money where our mouth is. We are prolific time travelers. Travelers, We are always going someplace. We're always going to have revival. We're always going to have a breakthrough. We're always going to see miracles in the future. This is the day of revival. This is the day of miracles. It's time for us to put some works with our faith. It's time for us to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's time for us to come with a sense of expectancy to the house of God to see him do miracles. And it was in that moment that Naaman was told to go dip in the Jordan seven times that he had a decision to make. Do I do it my way? Do I wait on another option? Or do I listen and adhere to what the man of God has spoken to me? Naaman, no doubt, was offended that The man of God himself didn't come out and speak to him. And that's where a lot of us stop when it comes to putting works with our faith is the spirit of offense. The spirit of offense in 2022 is running rampant. It's all over the church. It's all over the world. Everybody's looking for something to be offended about. It's a soft generation that doesn't understand how to get through things without being offended. Can I tell you that you'll be offended if you're looking for an offense by the time you drive off this property tonight. But if Naaman would have let the spirit of offense go to work in his mind, he never would have received his miracle. Can I tell you, you've got to be willing to push beyond every offense and every heartbreak and every issue and every word spoken against you. If you hadn't come to the altar in a while because of what somebody said, you're going to keep losing out on your miracle. If you can't pray because of what somebody said, you're going to keep losing out on your miracle. But tonight, if you can push past past the spirit of offense, God can move and God can touch you. But Naaman had to make up his mind that I'm not going to be offended. I'm not going to let the devil get a foothold in my mind over Elisha not coming out to talk to me. That happened to some of us. We'd have scheduled a counseling session with the pastor. We'd have cried to our spouse. We'd have complained in the ears of our children so that we can further pollute them. We'd have stayed stale and cold for two or three years. I know people today that are still nursing offenses from ten years ago. And can I tell you that the only person you're hurting is yourself. I firmly believe that if Naaman would have walked away and been offended, he could have came back ten years later and dipped in the Jordan River and he would have still been healed because it's what God said. But he could have held on to that offense for as long as he wanted to. I've come to tell somebody tonight that you are only hurting yourself if you will turn loose of the offense that has happened in your life, if you will turn loose of the words that have been spoken against you and your family. God is faithful and he will do the miracle for you tonight. And then maybe Naaman... 
could have gotten down to the Jordan River and he could have said, you know what? I just don't know if it's worth it. Can I preach to some crippled Christians tonight who don't want to put in the sacrifice? That you may not see the results on this side of glory. But every time that you're obedient to the Word of God, every time that you're obedient to the man of God and the voice of God, can I tell you that there are some things that you won't understand until you get over there. But it will be worth it all in eternity when you step on the streets of gold. So Naaman says, you know what, I'm just going to do it. That's the decision some of you need to make tonight. I'm just going to pray again. I'm just going to come down to the altar again. Can I ask some of you who have not received your miracle from God, do you really think that not coming to the altar is the key to receiving what God has for you? Because if He would have done it in your pew, He'd have done it five years ago. But Naaman makes up his mind. He says, you know what? I've got to do this. And he goes down to that nasty Jordan River. And he gets on down in there. And he begins to dip in that nasty river. And on dip one, nothing. Two, nothing. Three, nothing. And so on and so forth. But when he went down on the sixth time in obedience to the voice of God, when he went down on the sixth time, sacrificing his pride and laying it to the side when he came up on the seventh time you hear me when he came up out of the water he was made whole he was cleansed the Bible said his skin was like a baby's I've come to tell some of you that you're this close to a miracle you're this close to a miracle God wants to do it keep praying God wants to do it keep dipping God wants to do it keep being faithful keep being obedient stand Across the house and musicians come. But all of this happened because he put some works with his faith. There are a lot of things that we do remotely. There are a lot of things since 2020 that we can do remotely. But faith does not work remotely. I can't Stand back there and not pray and receive a miracle here. I can't just have it in my mind that I trust God and never take a step of faith down to the altar. I've come to tell you tonight that God wants to work miracles in this house. I am so sure of it and I know tonight without a shadow of a doubt that God is about to blow some of your minds that you raised your hand earlier and said you needed a miracle. But I want to ask you tonight, what are you willing to do to receive a miracle? Because if you've come down here tonight for a seven minute altar call, a a pretty little prayer, you're going to leave here the same. But I believe that God is calling this generation To prayer. I believe that God is calling this generation to the deeper things. Which means that if we're going to get there, we're going to have to dig in just a little bit deeper. Can I tell you that if you're going to get a miracle tonight, it's going to take obedience, sacrifice, and action. In the New Testament, we read about a lady with the issue of blood. She had spent all of her money. She had tried many things. And she was none the better, the Bible tells us. But we read where she had to make up her mind that I want my miracle so bad. I want my breakthrough. I want my financial blessing so bad. I want my children to come back to church so bad. I want the spirits of depression, anxiety, and fear to leave my mind so bad. That I don't mind crawling if I have to. No doubt on that day when she got down on the ground, her hands probably got stomped on. People may have even kicked her. She probably suffered some things on her way to Jesus. 
But not one of those things was in her mind that she went through when she touched the hem of his garment and she was made whole. We read about a man named Zacchaeus who wanted to see Jesus. He made a decision to climb a tree. He made a decision to go to a little higher level than he was at because he knew that I can't see Jesus from where I'm at. Can I tell some of you that the sin that you're living in and the mess you're living in, you're never going to see God do what He really wants to do in your life. Zacchaeus had to climb to a higher place in order to see the things of God. That may represent you getting out of the pew tonight, walking down here and saying, you know what? I've got to see the Lord. I can't, I, I can't see Him with these people I'm sitting by tonight. I can't see Him with these people that are surrounding me. I've got to get to the place where I can get a hold of Jesus. And guess what? Once he got there, Jesus said, come down. I'm going to your house today. We also read about a man by the name of blind Bartimaeus who heard that Jesus was coming. And everybody around blind Bartimaeus, when he began to cry out Jesus, they told him to shut up. No doubt right now that the voices of condemnation in your mind are screaming at you. Don't you lift your hands. Don't you get a breakthrough. Don't you receive your healing. But blind Bartimaeus cried even the louder. And Jesus touched blind Bartimaeus that day. And he was blind no more. He received his sight because he was willing to be obedient and push beyond where he was. Do you need a miracle tonight? Do you need a miracle tonight? I dare you to do something different than you've done the last five years I dare you tonight to dig in in prayer and make your mind up that tonight is the night that I do whatever it takes to see God touch me tonight is the night that I do whatever it takes to receive my breakthrough tonight is the night that I do whatever it takes for God to deliver me from lust and pornography and the sin lift your voice right now somebody pray in the Holy Ghost come on by the power and the authority that is in the Word of God and in the name of Jesus I find every spirit of condemnation and fear, every hindrance sent by the enemy to tear down at your people, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come on, we lose miracles right now. Come on, we lose deliverance right now. Come on, lift your voice. Pray in the Spirit. Come on, come on, miracles are happening. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, power, dominion, and authority over every work of the enemy, over every voice, over every word of condemnation. Come on, that's it. Come on, in the name of Jesus, do the work, Holy Ghost. You have given authority.
and keep praying, but right now, I want you to stretch your hands forth to this camera. We're going to pray the prayer of faith and believe that God is going to strengthen and touch our pastor and his wife as we pray. Do you have faith to believe tonight? Come on, do you trust the name of Jesus that he's able? Let's pray the prayer of faith by the power and the authority that is in the word of God and in the name of Jesus. We speak healing right now. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. We speak supernatural strength by the power of the name of Jesus. He all of those shatalabaha strengthen and touch right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
Joseph, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gage, for the ministry tonight. Thankful to the Lord for those that have been baptized, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Continue praying. We're going to continue singing and worshiping. We'll see you Wednesday, work night, shine Friday, back here again Sunday, expecting a great ministry this weekend. Amen. God bless you.